W-R-A-T. Good. Good boy with a wire. Let's talk about wires. Yes, you heard me correctly. Wires. Not liars. This other inaudible is cracked fucking heads, not legs. The courts have recognized that the government's use of informants is lawful and often essential to the effectiveness of criminal investigations. Referred to in FBI lingo as confidential human sources, recruiting and managing informants is one of the FBI's most critical ways of gathering intelligence. However, use of informants can certainly be tricky. You must have not read up on the latest rules. So that's what I'm going to talk about in this video today. The Sopranos and the law, particularly as it relates to the FBI's use of confidential informants. So let's get to it. Who is it? The FBI. Come on, dickhead. Open up. When I was coming up, this would never happen to new made guys. But too many people are doing a simulcast. An informant, not surprisingly, can be motivated by many factors, including financial gain or reduced sentencing for their own criminal offenses. And in terms of incentivizing people to work with the FBI as confidential informants, they have lots of resources to pay informants. Millions of dollars, in fact. What if I say no? The document that the government relies on for guidelines when it comes to using informants is called the Attorney General's Guidelines Regarding the Use of FBI Confidential Human Sources. Oh, high level. Since the original time of publication in 1976, the DOJ has revised the guidelines three times. 1980, 2001, and 2002. Always comes in threes, huh? He's on the force. He's on the task force, all right? Look, he's not lying to me. He was in my wedding. It's kind of amusing here how Detective McKazian says that his source wouldn't lie to him because he was in his wedding for crying out loud. Well, look who we're talking about here. One of Tony's best friends, who he loves. Not to mention his son, AJ's godfather. Wait a minute, where's pussy? It yeah, where's the godfather? Why don't you call for help in your radio mic, you fucking rat? What's the matter? You're not wearing one tonight? Nah, he didn't have time to put on anything decent. Don't go away. We'll be right back after a quick message from our sponsor, WRAT. No wonder the papers are calling us to you and a rat. Ever wanted to be a rat, but not actually do anything useful? Call now and become an honorary member of the Ray Curdo WRAT Foundation. The Attorney General's guidelines on informants require that prior to utilizing or officially recruiting someone as an informant, agents must complete and sign a written initial suitability report and recommendation that addresses various factors about the proposed informant, such as their biographical information, personal information, like their relationship to the main target of the investigation, that person's motivation for becoming an informant, along with their criminal history. To bring in a Sopranos example here, Let's use Sal, Big Pussy Bomp and Sarah, aka Thal, was picked up by the FBI for trafficking heroin and facing 30 plus years in prison. He decided to flip and work with them. Though we don't see it live on the show, there's actually a deleted scene of Puss getting caught by the FBI with heroin, and that's the moment when they convince him to flip. I have a unit, right? Yeah. All right, here it is, 375000 Nice doing business with you. Anytime. Have a Merry Xmas. Motherfucker! Look, I'm going to set my watch. I'm going to give you 15 minutes to make a decision on this. I'd like to give you longer, but I have other problems here that I have to deal with. You know what they say. Time and tide wait for no man, right? It's interesting how the FBI chief offered Puss 15 minutes to think about it, before making his decision as to whether he's going to flip. Because Tony sort of said the same thing to Christopher. I mean, not about flipping, but about being in the life or not. But it was 10 minutes that he had to think about it. And this was in D-Girl. Exactly 10 minutes I'm going to look up. If you're not here, I'm going to assume that you went to look for whatever the fuck it is that's calling you out there. And then I will never see you again. If you are still here, then I'm going to assume that you got no other desire in the world but to be with me. And your actions will show me that every fucking second of every fucking day. 
since 1980, the guidelines have permitted agencies to allow informants to engage in criminal activity that would otherwise not be allowed under federal, state, or local law. For example, an agency could allow an informant to purchase drugs from someone who's the target of a drug trafficking investigation. Once an informant is officially registered, every year, the FBI agent working with him or her, along with another government official who's present as a witness, must review written instructions with the informant to go over the scope of the informant's authority, the limits and risks when it comes to confidentiality, prohibitions on certain types of illegal activity, and the possible consequences of violating any of those conditions. For example, the map of Alakwa murder. The FBI wouldn't actually authorize in writing that Puss could go kill people in order to get closer to Tony. Though, of course, we know that Skip knew. The Bureau would never turn its head on a murder charge. We'll be right back. In the meantime, here's today's wall of irony and foreshadowing winner. You're in a little bit of denial here, too. So, Janice, I really don't have a shot anymore. Oh, you'll get your shot, all right. I think at this point, it's time to consider 16 bump and sour compost. When did they flip you? Tell me. Don't lie. Flip. Is everything okay here? Yeah, sure, just talk. The FBI says they're doing okay, but are they really? I'd say not so much. When it comes to the FBI on The Sopranos and their track record... I want you wired up! I want Tony Soprano on tape! Your boyfriend, too! No! I'm not doing it! Then you're all out of options! We lost a major asset this month. Point is, was Ray Curto a cooperator? The way things are shaping up, you're a designated hitter. Everything else okay? Good EKG and shit, huh? <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> all right. It was a judgment call. She sounded okay. Should we bring him in? That'll get us nothing. She really could have fled. She could be in China by now. All I know is it was shit out of luck till next Tuesday. Considering they're like zero for five or something like that, and over seven years they still hadn't managed to get an indictment, at least not until perhaps Carlo decides to flip. Actually, let me step back for a second. They didn't do horribly everywhere. They did get an indictment with Johnny Sack. But as far as New Jersey, not so much. So, Rico-wise, the airline tickets. Don't go away. We'll be right back after a quick message from our sponsor. I got enough cologne on. You smell like Paco Rabanne crawled up your ass and died. Smell like something crawled up your ass and died on the special occasion when you're about to die. So what are some other real life scenarios or case studies involving the FBI and informants? For one case study of the risk of using criminals as informants, in 1995, the government indicted James Whitey Bulger, the leader of an organized crime family in Boston, and his associate, Stephen the Rifleman Flemmy, on multiple charges of racketeering, including acts of extortion, murder, bribery, loan sharking, and obstruction of justice. Bolger and Flemmy had been FBI informants for much of the time period covered by the indictment. Evidence presented during the 1998 pretrial hearings in the government's case against Flemmy revealed misconduct and criminal activity by the FBI agents who had been working with the two informants. When I read that Whitey Bolger gave the head of the FBI's organized crime unit in Boston airline tickets, along with cases of expensive wine, etc., I immediately thought of Tony, of course, though in this case, the FBI agents were trying to use the tickets against Tony. Also, if you're looking to read any of these documents that I've mentioned, or any of the articles, let me know and I'd be happy to send you the links. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this latest video on The Sopranos and the use of confidential informants. Let me know what you think. Give it a like, comment, and subscribe. Take care.